Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 4 or round number 4 of our F1 2015 career mode with Carlos Sainz. We're here at Bahrain under the floodlights and uh, yeah, the nighttime race. Obviously this was translated into a nighttime race fairly recently and you can see the track there in the background but uh, after a fairly disappointing result last time out in China where the strategy didn't really quite work, only 12th but after two very good point scoring uh, positions, Carlos Sainz can still be very very happy with his first three rounds of the season but now we step out into the desert of Bahrain. If we could smash 50 likes on this episode of Crimo, that would be massively massively appreciated and I'll get another episode out for you on Thursday but in the meantime before the race starts it is time for the qualifying report. <laughs> Q1 saw yet another disappointing session for Dutch youngster Max Verstappen, as he would start 18th, dropping out with Pastor Maldonado. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel was fastest in his Ferrari. Lewis Hamilton was back on top in Q2 in front of championship rival Nico Rosberg. Sergio Perez and Marcus Ericsson showed solid pace, taking 11th and 12th, whilst Danny Kafiat is yet to get on top of that Red Bull, down in 13th only. But in the shootout, Lewis Hamilton would take pole from Nico Rosberg and championship leader Kimi Raikkonen in third. Felipe Nasser once again showed fantastic pace in eighth, with Carlos Sainz starting tenth for the second time in a row. So reading from tenth in reverse, it's Carlos Sainz Jr. who will start in tenth place for the Bahrain Grand Prix, with Nico Hülkenberg in front of him. Felipe Nasser will start eighth with Valtteri Bottas alongside him on row four in seventh. Felipe Massa and Daniel Ricciardo will occupy row 3 in 6th and 5th respectively. Kimi Raikkonen outperformed teammate Sebastian Vettel taking 3rd, but it's Lewis Hamilton who will start the Bahrain Grand Prix on pole from Nico Rosberg. Valtteri Bottas is trying to lap Will Stevens and he's run straight into the back of the mana car and lost his entire front wing. It's going to be Carlos Sainz Jr. to come across the line to take a very, very solid fifth position. And across the line we come to take seventh place from our teammate Max Verstappen. Verstappen takes the final points paying position and we come across the line to take a slightly disappointing 12. So then 10th on the grid yet again for Carlos Sainz Jr. He managed to claim 10th on the grid for China and will do so yet again under the floodlights here in Bahrain for round four. It didn't quite go the way he would have planned in China, only taking 12th but managing to fight his way back through the order after the strategy let him down a little bit. Hopefully it will go a little bit better in today's race. But now moving down onto the grid, as you can see, Carlos Sainz has been locked to prime tyres and clearly Carlos did his best lap time on options. He only went out to do a prime lap right at the start of the session. For, so for some reason, the FIA co-masters have deemed that doing your first lap on a set of tyres means you're locked to them for the start of the race. So Carlos is going to have to go for a completely alternate strategy, going for primes at the start of the race. And it's affected his race start here as we thunder down towards turn one because Hulkenberg gets the jump on us. Down towards turn one though, and Nazard really chopping across the Spaniard down through turn one. The space in the end didn't quite materialise as I think he perhaps would have hoped. But Sergio Perez is now actually in front of us in the Force India, the man who started 11th on the grid. And we're going to try and go up the inside of the Force India driver now down towards turn four. And Carlos Sainz Jr. has in fact made that move stick there, but almost coming to coming to blows there with Felipe Nazar right at the start of the race after the Brazilian did chop him off a little bit going through turn one. The space wasn't quite there, but it, he probably could have been given a little bit more. Now, obviously, this first thing is going to be hugely difficult for him because he's on the slower tyres, he's on the more durable tyres, but he's also on the slower tyres. That does, however, mean he can just use options until the end of the race. Now we're on board with Roman Grosjean having a look at that race start, and just a little bit of contact there between Sainz. Grosjean actually coming to blows there with Perez, actually, uh, through the first corner. They both managed to survive in the end, and Grosjean trying to make a move there on Hulkenberg. He doesn't in the end, but as you can see, moving on to lap three, we're doing an okay job of keeping Sergio Perez behind, as would be expected, Nazar, and I think it's Ricardo in front are starting to gallop away a little bit, but they are on the option tyres, so that is to be expected. As you can see though, now 
the option shot. Sergio Perez is going up the inside of us. We've managed to switch, though, to the inside down into turn one after Perez got the DRS on us. The two Force India cars making contact to Ramon Grosjean, trying to go right around the outside of both of them. He's, oh, he's not managed to get past Hulkenberg, but he has managed to get past Perez and now up into, la uh, into position 11, sorry. We're now on board with Nico Hulkenberg, just watching this develop. Uh, Perez breezing past Sainz, then Sainz going back to the inside. Hulkenberg hung out to dry on the outside. There's contact between the two Force India drivers, but he lunges it back up the inside there of Grosjean and Perez through turn two and just about manages to hold on to P10. But as you can see, Sainz is really struggling already on these prime tyres, really struggling for grip. Nasa getting away massively in front, but that is, of course, to be expected on the faster tyres. But it's now allowed Hulkenberg and Grosjean to get right with Sainz. Hulkenberg goes to the inside. Grosjean goes to the outside. Sainz, though, goes through the middle of both of them down into turn one. Hulkenberg has the inside line, but again, Sainz comes out on top. Grosjean this time hung out to dry, and Perez goes through the middle of both of them to take 10th place. Grosjean, though, manages to just get back in front of the Mexican driver. But now we're on board with Sergio Perez, and he has to watch this all develop in front of us. It's three abreast down into turn one. Hulkenberg on the inside. Sainz through the middle, and Grosjean on the outside, who gets hung out to dry the Frenchman. Then Hulkenberg gets hung out to dry through turn two, and Grosjean and Perez just about making a bit of contact. Perez flings his hand in the air, but Grosjean manages to come out on top. Now moving on to the end of lap five, and Roman Grosjean is making a move again in the Lotus. The two uh, Force Indias have dropped off a little bit, but Perez is still bearing down on us. I don't think he'll be able to make a move down into turn one, but Grosjean has gone at the inside of the Spaniard, down into turn one at the start of lap six, and Sainz this time round has no comeback, although I think he will try and get back into the slipstream of the Lotus driver down towards turn four. Can Sainz make a move? I don't think I don't think he's quite got the grunt. Hasn't quite got the straight line speed, the squirt in that Toro Rosso, and Roman Grosjean manages to hold on in front of the Toro Rosso driver. Uh, so Grosjean looks as if he's got ninth place nailed at the moment. Don't think Sainz is going to be able to come back on this one. But as you can see further up the order, this is Felipe Massa now. He's battling with both of the Ferrari drivers, and we're about to breeze past Sebastian Vettel with the assistance of the DRS down into turn one. It's a fantastic move from Felipe Massa. I think promoting him up into fourth place. Now moving on to lap nine, though. And as you can see, Carlos Sainz on these prime tyres has actually started to gap Perez and Hulkenberg and the gaggle behind, including Ericsson, and I think Verstappen's in there as well, whilst they're on option tyres. So Sainz doing a very good job at the end of this stint of tyre uh, tire conservation in the end. A lot of drivers, though, coming into the pit lane, including Hulkenberg in front. We are now up into third place as Rosberg doesn't pit. Hamilton now in as well. Bottas, the only person, I think, staying in front. He now leads the race as Rosberg comes in onto lap 11. But as you can see, Sainz now coming under pressure from Lewis Hamilton on those new option tyres down into the down into this un, this downhill hairpin and Hamilton's actually half spun us there science did go a little bit wide but Lewis Hamilton, I don't know, I don't know whose fault that was. Maybe Sainz should have given him more room, or maybe Lewis Hamilton should have got out of the move. Clearly Sainz had the position stuck, and Sainz is really struggling on these tyres now, locking up and understeering massively out wide. That's allowed Kimi Raikkonen on a new set of option tyres as well. He's gone through too, and now at the end of the lap, of course, having to take those prime tyres a little bit longer, otherwise it's going to be very, very difficult to, uh, to extend that option stint. So now into the pit lane onto lap 12. We're going to lose out a lot of positions, let's be honest here, because the rest of the drivers around us who started on the options obviously those tires aren't as durable so they will have naturally got a massive undercut on us some of us uh, some of them sorry getting a three lap undercut on Carlos Sainz Jr. So he's going to drop down the positions he's already down into 13th position now through comes Alonso and Maldonado they're going to leapfrog him as well as he comes out of the pit lane on cold tires and we're down into 15th position is the Toro Rosso driver but the good news for him is he's got the rest of the race now to pass all the guys in front of him and he's only got option tires to run hopefully if he can extend the stint enough we've got Marcus Ericsson behind so we're going to have to defend from the Swede first up uh, because he's obviously on warmer tires he's got his tires tires up to temperature whereas sciences are a little bit cold having only just come out of the pit lane moving later though onto lap 12 going through the second drs zone on the lap and we are closing in on fernando alonso the tires are up to temperature we've got far more grip than the mclaren honda and we're just going to drive around the outside through that fast-paced right hand corner alonso though still sticking it up the inside there almost giving us a bit of a hip and shoulder through this uh, penultimate corner but in the end superior traction manages to maintain the position for Carlos Sainz and actually behind Marcus Ericsson making a move on Fernando Alonso and getting that job done into the final corner. Now just a few laps later and we've already managed to catch Pastor Maldonado and Sergio Perez so we're already on the outskirts of the points here in 14th position and sniffing 12th from the two cars in front. We get much better traction than Maldonado. We're already past him but as you can see Sergio Perez pitting right in front of us chopping our nose off. Thankfully, it wasn't Maldonado who was having to pit. Otherwise, that could have been an aeroplane crash through, uh, coming out of the last corner 
That would have been absolutely massive. We would have been heading straight to the scene of the accident, but down into turn one we go. Perez has pitted, which has made our job slightly easier, and we're up into 12th position. As you can see, though, we might be about to gain another position because Valtteri Bottas in the Williams. That engine is blown already a puff of smoke, so I think someone had locked up down as this happened. On board, though, now with Sebastian Vettel, and we're getting a face full of smoke as Valtteri Bottas' Mercedes power unit gives up on him completely. As you can see, Bottas filtering down the order now. And Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz Jr. here are going to move up into 10th and 11th respectively. So we're down to 19 runners. Valtteri Bottas out of the race. And that has promoted Max Verstappen, the young Dutchman, in the Toro Rosso now up into a points paying position into 10th place and Sainz into 11th. But I think it's only a matter of time before those two positions swap as now Carlos Sainz gets the DRS in the slipstream and through he goes past his teammate and up into the points positions. And of course now... Uh, with everyone else being on the option tyres for the second stint of the race, uh, we've now got, or Carlos has now got a stint where he's on the option tyres and everyone else is on prime tyres. So this should go this should go pretty well for him again. Again, everyone else around him is going to get an undercut on him because they're going onto the prime, more durable tyres. So everyone else is going to get an undercut on him because obviously he's got to do less laps on the set of options. We come out. Of, uh, everyone else comes out of the pit lane though and Carlos Sainz manages to pro promote himself up into sixth place. But as you can see, at the end of lap 19, the tyres have got off massively. Ricardo and Massa were all over the back of the Spaniard. And we're going to have to extend this stint quite substantially now on option tyres. Kafia in front of us on the in the Red Bull has come in on the same lap for a set of primes. So clearly, there's not too much of a difference in durability between the options and primes around this circuit. Because obviously Kafia is coming, on, on, coming in onto primes uh, on this lap. Carlos Sainz was only scheduled to come in onto options on the next lap. So there's apparently only one lap's worth of durability between the two sets of tyres, or the two different tyre compounds. Carlos Sainz, though, has come out of the pit lane in 10th. He still managed to get out in front of Max Verstappen. So the overcut just about working for him, and now he's got the tyres up to temperature, and he's all over the back of the prime shot, Danny Kafia in the bigger brother car, almost giving him the hip and shoulder again, through into this hairpin, at the towards coming towards the end of Sector 2. And we've just about, Carlos Sainz, they're just about managing to get around the outside of Danny Kafia. A fantastic move there down towards now this downhill left-hander double double apex left left-hander if you like and on to lap 21 we're up into ninth place perhaps seventh place in this race is a decent aim as you can see onto lap 24 now, we've managed to catch Grosjean, but that's another car out of the race. It's Lewis Hamilton. There you can see on the uh, on the screen briefly, he dropped down into ninth. Now, Kofiat has passed him as well. We're down to 18 runners. Grosjean's now up into 7th place, and Sainz up into 8th. Now, the target for the Spaniard originally was to catch and pass both Grosjean and Nasser, who at the time held 7th. But now Lewis Hamilton's retired, we've been gifted a free position, and now we're going up the inside of Roman Grosjean, the Frenchman, in the Lotus. We've timed it perfectly as well, because Carlos Sainz is now going to get a boost of DRS down the straight, because he was still behind the Frenchman, going through the activation zone, and up into 7th place we go. There's 3.7 seconds, I think that was, down the road to Felipe Nasser in the Sauber, so onto lap 27, the gap is now down to 2.5 seconds. But now moving on to lap 28, the penultimate lap of the race, the tyres are starting to go off these option tyres and the gap is staying pretty constant. So it looks as if 7th place is going to be uh, Carlos's best, uh, well, best possible position here, unless there's another retirement on the final lap of the race. But as you can see, the options for Carlos Sainz went off to such a degree, pitting that lap earlier really hindered the Spaniard because now... Roman Grosjean and Danny Kafia are all over the back of him on the prime tyres and this race is not over yet because the Frenchman Grosjean in the Lotus and the Russian Kafia in the Red Bull are all over the back of Sainz who understeers massively through the uh, through the penultimate corner. He's just about managed to get better traction than Grosjean and he'll just about hold the advantage down into, t into the last corner but Kafia and Grosjean alongside each other down into the final corner. Sainz just got, just got to be slow and steady through this final corner, hit the apex and make sure he comes out of the corner unscathed he has done, but Grosjean and Kofiak will both get the DRS on the Spaniard going towards the line, and he just holds on. Thankfully, the, the, the finish line isn't where the start line is, because I think if that had been the case, Science would have been under real, real, well, he would have been in real, real problems from Grosjean and Kofiak behind. In the end, it is another solid seventh place for Carlos Science, the Spaniard, in the end. He dropped a lot of time to Nazar on that final lap when the tyres went off, but he had good pace in that final stint, a very good amount of pace in the second stint as well. That's what really got him up to seventh place, but it's Nico Rosberg who wins the race fairly unchallenged in the end after the retirements for Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. Kimi Raikkonen taking second from Vettel, Ricardo Massa, Nazar, Science, Grosjean, Kofiak, and Max. Max Verstappen in the other Toro Rosso, rounding out the points from Hulkenberg, Maldonado, Ericsson, Alonso, Button, Perez, Stevens and Merry, with Hamilton and Bottas, the only retirements in this race. 
So I've got to get my breath back because that was a pretty damn entertaining race. As you can see, with that retirement to Lewis Hamilton, Kimi Raikkonen still leads the championship now by seven points over his teammate Sebastian Vettel. So Ferrari with a 1-2 at the moment after the, the lack of consistency from Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton who find themselves third and fourth in the championship with Ricardo fifth, Massa sixth, Bottas in seventh. But we've managed to close the gap now to just four points behind the Finn. Uh, Steins on 22 and Bottas there on 26. Nasa in eighth place in the championship. And now you can see the Constructors' Championship as well. The only change in order uh, in that is Lotus managing to pass Force India. They've got their second point of the season with Grosjean taking eighth in that race. And so they move up into seventh place past Force India. But it's still Ferrari leading the championship. Of course, 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. Hence, leading the Constructors' Championship from Mercedes, Williams, Red Bull and Toro Rosso there in fifth with Sauber in sixth. But I hope you really did enjoy that round of F1 2015 Karimo. And a really mad race again. Much like China, a lot of battling for science. Managing to battle his way through the order again after strategy seeming to almost screw him over. But uh, a very entertaining race, lots of overtaking, a few retirements here and there as well. But I hope you did enjoy. Feel free to smash the like button if you did. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new around here as well for F1 2015 and FIFA 15 content. And comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much as well. But it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.